Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your love. We're thankful for your grace. I'm thankful for your faithfulness. Who are we that you're mindful of us, if not for the blood of Jesus? Lord, this morning I saw Wuram Kolapo and I just remember your faithfulness. How you are good and you answer prayers. Blown away by your mercy, oh God. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We pray as we go into your word today. Thank you for granting us utterance by the power of the Holy Spirit to speak your word accurately. Thank you because people will be encouraged, filled with faith, and come to a deeper place in Christ. Thank you because questions will be answered. Oh, speak with such precision by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We pray for all the women. That whatever brings you joy will not be taken from you. Amen. That whatever you carry in the heart as a prayer request, you will come and testify of the goodness of God on it. When it's time for you to be celebrated, you'll not be represented. When it's time for you to be celebrated, you'll not be packed aside. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you can have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. All right. Are we ready for the word of God today? Are we ready for the word of God today? You know, when it comes to Mother's Day, it, um, it's here and there. Some people are very happy to be celebrated. For people that have lost their mom, it's kind of a very tough day. Because all of a sudden, all the memories come back. And you just remember, you just, you know. And the truth is that there's no age you lose your mom that you think she's old enough. If she was a very good mother. I remember, I remember when my mom passed on, it was painful for me very painful and it was painful because in my own case i'd had revelations that my mom passed on and also taking time to pray you know in one way i felt that i could change it by prayer but the more i prayed the more i had the revelation repeatedly so it was a thing of struggle eventually she passed on and one of my biggest pain was when my mom passed on was the fact that my mom worked so hard to raise us I was hoping she would be available for a longer time to be able to enjoy the fullness of what we will become or we are becoming. Unfortunately, my mom died, and um, my mom died. And uh, I remember I got the call from my brother. Well, not a call; it was a text message. I remember, and you know, you will not believe this. I see my mother's phone number. Like, yeah, it's still on my phone, even though my mother has been dead for 13 years now. It's still on my phone. I'm, my phone number is still there. <laughs> because I'm just afraid of deleting it. It's just difficult to admit that that number could be somebody else right now. You know, and um, I'm saying so because how do you deal with loss? How do you deal with grief? And when she died, I was like, ah, but I thought I prayed. And when you have loss or grief in your life, maybe it's a love of a mom, maybe it's a love of someone that is close to you, maybe it's a loss of someone when you have loss in your life, you must really understand this. Because once you have loss, the first thing that happens to you is denial. You will be like, this is not happening. Because when my mom died, and when you see people that die, they look as if they are sleeping in the first few hours. 
I said, no, my mom, because she died in her bed. She died in her sleep. She wasn't sick. She spoke to me a day before. I like, no, my mom is not dead. I looked at her. But the only time I knew she was dead was when I called her because my mother is not a deep sleeper. I was to call her. Even if we opened up her room, my mom wakes up. Oh, wow. And she died. And all of a sudden, question happened. We called my sister. My sister was saying, why? Because my mother died a week to my sister's wedding, which made it more catastrophic for everyone. I started like asking questions, but I learned some things. How do you deal with grief? How do you deal with loss? Number one, you must understand that there are questions that will never have answers on this side of eternity. I know that some of you are wondering, how, how come good people die? There are other people that deserve to die. I know, I know you're pointing at some policemen, pointing at some politicians, and you hope that because in your own estimation they're bad people, they deserve to die. I understand how you feel. He said, but not my brother, not my mom, not my sister, not that my benefactor. But the truth is that when it comes to this kind of questions, the honest truth is this, the questions will never have answers for on this side of time. Sometimes people come and meet and say, Pastor, tell me what you think. And I'm like, I'm a man of God, I'm not God. You know what the Bible says here? It said, the things that are revealed are revealed unto us, and that's what it is. But this is what I've learned, and this is what I've learned. That in every situation of loss and grief, that his grace is sufficient. He says, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You know what I've noticed? In every season of loss, there's a strength that comes out of you that you never knew you had. You will just look back and be like, my God, I never knew I was this kind of person. I never knew I could find this kind of strength. And the last thing about loss is this and grief. And this is what you do with loss and grief. Always remember this when you deal with loss and grief. And this helped me a lot. I will not allow the things I do not understand to confuse what I understand. What does that mean? I pray that my mom should leave. I'm not sure why she died. But I don't understand that. But what I understand is that God answers prayers. I will not allow what I do not understand to confuse what I understand. Let me tell you how medical science do it. Medical science has a way of treating people. If you have malaria, this is a procedure. If you have typhoid, this is a procedure. But you all know that there are sometimes those procedures do not work. Yes or no? Do they abandon everything? No. They only say that this is an isolated case. So they keep treating that people, but they say that this one which did the, for typhoid and the person died. This is this an isolated case. What they've learned in medical sciences is, I will never let what I do not understand to confuse what I understand. And I'm saying so because there are Christians today. Because you lost somebody, because you prayed about something, it didn't happen. Because you, you, you wanted something, it didn't go the way. And you say, God is unfaithful. But all your life, God has been faithful. Apart from these two, three experiences. Don't allow what you do not understand to confuse what you understand. You know why? Eventually, when we get to the other side, we will see better. And when we see better, we will know better. And when we know better, we will feel better. And then all our answers will have, all our questions will have answers. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Job, Job chapter 28 verse 11. Just as we continue teaching on God's word. As we continue teaching on God's word. Job chapter 28 verse 11. We're in a season where people are asking questions. This person died. This person died. Is God angry? Do they deserve to die? People are saying, before you say the wrong thing, do not allow what you don't understand to confuse what you understand. Job chapter 28 verse 23 verse 11. The Bible says this. Job chapter 23 verse 11. It says, my foot had held his steps, his way have I kept and not declined. Verse 12. Verse 12. He says, neither have I gone from commandment of his lips. I have esteemed his word more than my necessary meal. Let's look at that again. Let's read the last line together where he says, I have. One to go. I have esteemed his word of his mouth more than my necessary meal. I wanted to notice the emphasis. I wanted to notice the emphasis that Job placed on the word. You know, some of you can say, some of you taste like, oh, I can't go out without deodorant. Oh, I can't go out without makeup. Oh, I can't go out without this. Job says that when it comes to me, I put the word above food. He didn't say above my snacks. He says, I put the word above necessary meal. Listen to me, snacks are not necessary meal. The 
is a priority and I'm, and that's what i'm inviting you to today i'm asking you that is it possible for you to put the word i'm asking you is it possible for you to put the word of god above necessary meals look at the priority of the word of god so the word of god is not what i study or read when i feel like it's not what i study or read when i come to church it's what i do because there's so much value i put on the word see what he said job trained himself he wasn't this way he says i've trained myself to esteem the word of his mouth more than my necessary meal can i challenge you before you eat your breakfast ask yourself have i read the bible and make a commitment no bible no breakfast then we know you are growing you want to grow that's when we know you are growing you, you want to eat the first you're like mm. you want to take the first spoon of eat no meal right? by the way after service there's free indomie for women outside praise god yeah praise god cut see indomie nigeria praise god hallelujah so after service also you can get raffle draws there are many things you can get gifts for women outside play raffle draw play a game and win something we eat an air product and all of that so we're going back to the word of god he says, I've esteemed the word of God. So some of you pray, I pray. But see what Job is teaching us. He said, it's time for us to esteem the word of God more than our necessary meal. Question, is that the value you place on the word of God? Do you place value on the word of God? How do you know if you place value on the word of God? Do you have time set aside for the word of God? Do you have to have a Bible? Do you have a physical Bible or an electronic Bible? Do you have a note where you write your lessons in the Bible? Very important. Do you have a note where you write your lessons in the Bible? Say, I love my Bible. Bible. Bring her whatever your Bible is. Say, I love my Bible. Mm -hmm. I love my Bible. Bible. Where will I be without a Bible? How will I know my right and my left without the Word of God? Job said, He says, I've esteemed the Word of His mouth more than my necessary meal. Some people say, I can't do without money. I can't do without the word of God. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mount of God. That's the way you're designed. Listen to me. Your body was designed from the earth. So you need to feed it with things from sand, like tomato, like cabbage, like rice, to keep the body alive. Your spirit came from God. You need to feed it with whatever is God, which is spirit. He said, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's look at John chapter 17, verse 15. Verse 17. Just John 17, 17. Glory to God. John 17, verse 17. Ready? John 17, 17. Let's just get it. One to go. Sanctify. The word sanctify means set apart. Someone said the word sanctify means set apart. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is what? So say this after me. Say the word, the word of God is truth the word of god his truth the word of god his truth so why is this important i want to show why this is important he says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is true so the reason why the word of god is important is this the word of god helps me know what is true among seven opinions and facts i don't know if you have done a multiple multiple choice question before you've done something like that so they will tell you something they will ask you a question like what is the capital of lagos state and they'll say one port and they will say two um, and no go and they will say three ikeja and there'll be many options and there'll be one option that will give the right answer the question is that how do i know the right option when it comes to life it's the word of god that tells me what is true because everybody has an opinion the doctors have an opinion my friends have an opinion my parents have an opinion but the word of god is the only truth that i know someone says how do you make decisions what does the word of god say he says set them apart how do you set them apart he said truth the truth thy word is truth the word of god is truth what anybody says contrary the word is not truth. the word of god is truth glory to god i said glory to god 
so when you mess up in the office and your your boss looks at you and says you are good for nothing and nothing good can come out of you you look at yourself before you start thinking those nasty thoughts ask yourself what is the truth the truth is this that i am a chosen generation <laughs> I am rare. I'm not like other people. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm called for to show for the glory of him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is my truth. Praise God. I said praise God. When your friends say, hey, the IT company wants to start, you can raise the capital. He will say, you don't understand that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. God positions me in right opportunities. That is my truth. You and your, you and all your friends, you were doing cocaine, you were doing marijuana, you were doing all of those things. You got born again and you're saying, I'm going to stop this thing. And they say, you can't stop. How you, nobody gets hooked on cocaine and stop. You say, you don't understand. The Bible says that sin shall not have dominion over me. I know that I've been doing pornography for such a long time. I know I've been doing masturbation for such a long time. But the Bible says sin shall not have dominion over me because I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. This is my truth. I understand your opinion but this is my truth I understand your facts but this is my truth my truth is this that whosoever the truth set free is free indeed I've been set free glory to God so when they say you can't break an addiction like I understand what you're saying but that's not my truth listen to me you can have an opinion but your opinion is not my truth what is my truth what God says Opinions are powerful, but nothing else as powerful as the truth. So when you go to the hospital and the doctor says, I'm sorry, there's something wrong with your fallopian tube. It's all messed up and blocked. So you will not be able to have a child. You say, you don't understand. When God made me, he said, be fruitful and multiply. I was designed to multiply. I understand that medical fact says that my fallopian tube is blocked. But the truth says that I'm designed to multiply. And guess what? The truth has a way of overriding facts. Because fact is always changing. Are you here? Fact is always changing. When I, when I was in school, they told me that there were nine planets. That was a planet called Pluto. They came up and said that Pluto is not a planet. Fact is always changing. They said atom was the smallest indivisible part of something, something, something. They came up, they said there's something else smaller than atom. Because what fact is always changing. What does not change? Truth does not change. What God said 10,000 years ago. What God said 5,000 years ago. is still what God is saying right now. You know why truth does not change? Because truth is not the Bible but truth is a person truth is a person truth is a person who is the truth Jesus says I am the way I am the truth I am the life he said no man come to the father by me except by me somebody say truth is a person so he doesn't change truth is a person glory to God I said glory to God I said glory to God. Truth is a person. They say, well, I, 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 you know, just be careful with this marriage thing because marriage is failing in our family. Nobody stays married for a long time. You say, that's the problem. Ecclesiastes say, what the Lord doeth, he doeth forever. I don't know who did your own marriage, but my own marriage is what the Lord doeth. What the Lord doeth, it doeth forever. Are you here, somebody? That means when divorce comes, it will pass me over. I'm not saying what you said is not true, but that's an opinion. I'm not saying what you said is not true, but that's a fact. But I'm not leading towards fact. I'm leading towards truth. Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. In the gallery, glory to God. I can't hear this guy in the gallery, glory to God. I believe the truth. They, they, what Jesus Christ was going to heal a child. The father had come and said, my child is almost, is, is almost dead. As he was going, they said, tell the master not to worry that he's dead. He's dead. And when they said so, the man wanted to be afraid. And Jesus Christ said, only believe. Man said, sir, she's dead. He said, only believe. You know why? When it comes to fact, fact can always change. But truth has a way of superimposing of facts. What he was telling the woman was this. 
the fact can always change but only believe if you want the fact to change only believe if you want the fact to change only believe if you want the fact to change only look at him and say if you want the fact to change only believe he got there and when he entered all the fat experts said uh, uh, see i too know egoistic guy he don't come yeah 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 and as soon as he got there rabbi he said put out all the facts he said, Talito Kumi. The Bible says, and he and she that was dead came back to life. All of a sudden, fact was disgraced again. Because truth has a way of humbling facts. I don't know the fact that needs to change. But congratulations, there's enough truth to change the fact you carry. But why is it important to study the word of God? The reason why it's important is this. The more I study the word of God, the more I know the truth of God's word. If I can't study the word of God, I can't know the truth. Once the fact comes, I don't know what is true because the fact has said what it is. What is the truth of God's word? And we're giving out a lot of things. So I said, Pastor, are you not concerned that people will never have to give to church because everybody's going through stuff? I said, the fact is this, that things are bad, but the truth is this, that the Lord shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. The truth is this, since I was young, now I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither have I seen a seed bread in bread. The fact is that things are hard economically, inflation is at 30%. He said, people might never find it hard to give to church. I said, but the truth is this, what is the truth? Uh, that the silver and the gold belongs to my father. That is the truth. The truth is that as long as the age remain it, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. If we go as a church and we're feeding people, that is seed time. Then the harvest is going to come back again because that is the truth. I'm not disputing what the God Central Bank said. I'm not disputing what Aboki Effect said. But the Bible is the truth that I believe. And the truth is a person. The four Hebrew, the three Hebrew children told Nebuchadnezzar, he said, if you trust in the fire, we'll burn. He said, but our God is able to save us. He said, it's the fact that we were born. He said, but there's the truth that God can save. Nebuchadnezzar said, who is the God that can deliver out of my hands? He said, wait and let him show up for you. And he showed up. All of a sudden, they entered into the fire. The people that put them inside were burnt by the flame of the fire. They put inside the fire. The fire burned their ropes, could not touch them. The reason why is that the truth has a way of triumphing over the fact. Question, when you go through life, when you receive your facts, do you have enough truth that can triumph over the facts? Look at him and say, you need truth. Why do you need truth? John chapter 8 verse 32, he says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That means you're not free because you're saved. You're free because you know the truth. Can I shock you with this? The man that does not know the truth and the man that is not free have the same portion. The reason why is that even though he doesn't know the truth that he's free, he will never experience freedom question and this is why you have to go to the word to find out what the word says about your truth why is it important to know the truth the second thing that's the, the second thing the truth helps me identify deception john chapter 8 verse 44 oh john chapter 8 verse 44 the truth helps me identify deception look at him and say the truth helps me identify deception john chapter 8 verse 44 are you ready I love the scripture. Let's go ahead. Let's just get together with a loud voice. Want to go? Hold on. It says the devil, number one, he says there is no truth in him. That means if the devil wants to look at me right now, he will just say, you are wearing a white shirt. He has no capacity to tell the truth. He cannot see me and tell you what I'm doing. When he says there's no truth in him, it's not that he lies. The, you know, it's one thing to lie. The devil lacks the capacity to tell the truth. 
So when he looks at you and says you're a failure, say, devil, I understand your problem. You lack the capacity to what? Tell the truth. When he says that nobody will marry you, say, devil, I understand your problem. You lack the capacity to what? To tell the truth. When he says you will not do well in life, I understand your problem because you lack the capacity to what? To tell the truth. The Bible says this, because there's no truth. He didn't say he lies. He said there is no truth. He didn't say some truth. He said there's zero truth in him. I'm sure you never knew there was that way. And that's why I'm very careful about deliverance churches. Where people will not tell you about demons for one hour. You know why? Whatever they knew about Satan, they were lied to by Satan. That's why, if you've been born again for a while, you'll have read all this book. Um, Deliver from the power of darkness. Emmanuel Eni. He came to set the captain's key. Rebecca Brown. Battle for what? Rebecca Brown. Um, prepare for vessel hunter. Rebecca Brown. Then there was Sister Grace. These three people I mentioned in the days when I got born again, you know, there were people that used to tell you that I was vice president to Satan. All of them were vice president to Satan. As a matter of fact, Sister Grace came out and said, Imana Eni said he rose up and became a 666 agent. That was 666. That it was next to Satan. Sister Grace now said, you see, a man did not realize that there was a superior level because he could not see it. That it was 999. That she was of the 999 level and she was next to Satan. I say, see deception, correcting deception. The reason why is that there's no truth in Satan. If you want to find out about Satan, read the word. So now we can say, how many of you are there? Well, 24 is a lie. He knows you cannot count them anyway. There's no truth in him. There's no truth in him. See what, what the Bible said. Next line. Want to go? Let's read together. I want to go. And when he speaketh a lie, what happens? Let me explain what that means to you. He says, when Satan lies, you must know that he was not tempted. He speaks naturally. Everybody lies. You need to know that. He said, when Satan lies, it's not that he was tempted, he was afraid. Mm-mm. He speaks naturally. Lying is this what mother tongue. When he lies, he is his comfort zone. My challenge is that you are listening to too much lies from the devil. And that's why you are feeling depressed and unhappy. Listen to me. If you hang around the tree, you will hear the serpent speak to you. That's a good place to clap. If Eve never hung around the tree, the serpent will have not spoken. If you hang around the tree, you will hear the serpent speak to you often. Can I be honest with you? There are some things you should delete off your social media so that the serpent never speaks to you. He says that when he speaketh, he speaketh of his own. Why? The Bible says, not that he lies. He is a liar and the father. The father means he was the one that gave birth to. Nobody created lie. He was the one that invented, created, proposed, modeled lying as a product. Praise God. So when the devil comes to you and says, you never marry, why do you worry? He says, Satan, you lack the capacity to say the truth. The truth is that I'm married already. I remember when I was, when I was young, I was about 12, 13 years old, there about, you know, there was this prophet, and Satan can use anybody to lie to you. This prophet came, this prophet, big beards, hairs, he goes to the mountain every, every year, writes prophecy, he wrote, my, he wrote my mommy prophecy, writes for all the children, now wrote them and said, ha, ah, and said, me, oh, I'm going to die young. That was a prophecy for me that year that I'm going to die young. That they need to, they need to do irapada. What's the English word for that word? Redemption. Redemption means they will take you to a certain river, use bed, kill something, and <laughs> I was already born again filled with the Holy Ghost. Nobody could do that to me. I knew that that was not godly. Glory to God. So, my mother told me, my mother was so bad and all of those things. I said, I know, that says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The one you try to deceive is the one that don't know the truth. If you know real dollar, won't you know fake dollar? The reason why they keep giving you fake dollar is because it's not real dollar. Satan keeps giving you fake dollar. Any spot in, hey, attack. Any spot in, attack. Because you don't know real dollar. So, when they told me, I told my mom, don't worry. I said, I will take care of it. My mom said, ah, are you sure? I said, I will take care of it. I said, she be saw in the vision. Okay. I said, whatever he saw, both the dream and the dreamer, the prophet and the prophetia, I cancel you in the name of Jesus. Guess what? This many years after, my mother is dead. My auntie that introduced my mother to the prophet is dead. The prophet himself is dead. I'm the only one alive. You know why? 
the light that becomes a reality in your life is the lie you believe so the way you empower the liar is by believing the lie the way you empower the liar is by believing what the lie if you choose not to believe the lie the liar will never have a place in your life have you seen yahoo boys before the moment they know you think that is a girl that is talking to you you are finished or is a guy that is talking to you you are finished is a real guy that loves you say hello baby he says since i met you online i've never met you love and they're thinking because i miss you so much after my last break of four years ago i've never seen someone love me like this and they are chatting and you're chatting and you're chatting and you're chatting the moment you've entered and you think it's a human being that loves you that is chatting to you you've entered one chance because from that place you just say one day i'm depressed format <laughs> format format because when you hear i'm depressed next thing why the admission is closing and they just shut down my bank account i need four thousand dollars to pay ah you were like but i thought you had graduated of course i'm forging my education again all of a sudden what can i do to help ah. I know you have your own things to do, so I'm never looking up to you. But my uncle that said will help me the other day was just appointed. Things are hard in Nigeria. I even had I've already had this saved up. I will send you a screenshot right now of the amount of money I've saved up. It's all a lie. You know, but the point is that once the devil has your ears, he will deceive you. Why are you even talking in the first place? Why are you engaging that thought that he says you will not marry? Just silence and say, Shh. what God does, he does forever. engaging the voice the voice that says you'll never get the approval why are you engaging the voice because the more you engage the voice the more you what believe the lie you empower what the liar glory to god so why is it important to know the truth the reason why i want to know the truth is this watch this now because as we know the truth we're able to know deception so when you get that spiritual email from spiritual yahoo yahoo you're able to say mm -mm -mm, god does not talk this way some of you are here they've collected your money from your parents because they wanted to marry your, your and some mothers are here they've used all their money for their children because the prophet knows how to coin prophecy you know coin prophecy Ah, mama. Bori, mari, bori, bari, bari, bari. Ah. For your children to stay in their husbands has to be difficult too. Hey! When your mother tells you that kind of thing, your mommy, calm down. Man did not start it. Man cannot finish it. Man did not start it. Man cannot stop it. My destiny is not in the hand of man. Any man that wants to touch my destiny will see God arise. Praise God. Someone said, I dreamt in my dream and something happened. You see, sleep again. <laughs> if you had bad dreams, sleep again. Let me ask you, if you dream to remove money in your account, does it remove in the physical? So why are you worried about your dreams? If you don't like the dream, when you wake up, then cancel it. So if you dreamt your dream, they did you want me from my account? You will not check your bank account and see if the money was withdrawn. Yes or no? Exactly. So when you wake up, you check the word of God. What the word of God say? Is it what is in the dream? No, you cancel it. You say dream, align. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The last thing I want to share is that the word of God is a cleanser. Somebody say the word of God is a cleanser. Is a cleanser. Ephesians chapter 5. Oh, I love this. The word of God is a cleanser. Every time you believe, watch this now. Every time you believe a lie, what do you do? You empower the liar. Every time you believe a lie, you empower the liar. Some of you are trying to do a project and there are all this thought of you can't. There are all this thought of you can never achieve something because you're not perfect. You don't pray enough. You have this. You have that. You know, and all those thoughts torment you. All those thoughts makes you feel as if the reason why you're not married is because of this imperfection you have. The reason why you can't make it in life is because of imperfection you have. Can I tell you something? Let me tell you this quickly. Imperfection has never stopped God from blessing people. Someone say prove it. I'll prove it to you. He blessed Jacob. Jacob was a cheat. He blessed David. He was a murderer and, a phonic, and an adulterer. He blessed Moses. Moses had a temper. He blessed Joseph. Joseph was a talkative. He blessed Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. He 
blessed Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a stammerer. Their imperfection could not stop God's blessings. Every time you have those thoughts, you want to do something big, something powerful, and those thoughts are coming to your mind. Those thoughts are attacking you that you will never get ahead. You will never do well. That you don't have this. You don't pray enough. You don't have this connection. You don't know nobody. Just remember that imperfection has never stopped God from blessing people. As a matter of fact, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies those that he has called. Look at your neighbor and say, there's, and say, imperfection has never stopped God's blessings. You know what God does? What God does is that he will bless you in such a way you will feel bad they are not serving him. Has it happened to you before? Where well, you be like, God, I don't even know why you are faithful to me. That's where God wants you to be. He wants to show you so much love that you will break down by the reason of his love. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. 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 Let me close by saying this. And this is the power of having God's word. God's word gives you perspective. If it's taking time for your dreams to happen, maybe you're planning to buy a house, maybe you're trying to get married, it's taking time for your dream to happen. And maybe the people you started out together have gone ahead of you, and you're troubled, you're down, and you're wondering, but I've been working very hard at it, and the dream has not happened. I wanted to know something. There's a story of an elephant and a dog. The elephant and the dog got pregnant at the same time. The same month they got pregnant. Six months, is it six or three months after? The dog had ten puppies. Six months after that time, the dog got pregnant again and had ten puppies. The elephant had not delivered one child. He was still pregnant. The next year, the dog got pregnant again and had puppies. Ah. By the time, by the top pregnancy, I had about 30 children now, 30 puppies. The dog went to meet the elephant. I said, are you sure you are pregnant? He said, I'm pregnant. He said, but you have not seen anything. And that's what some of you are saying. I've not seen anything. Other people have things to show for business, show for their career. I've not seen anything. The dog got pregnant again and delivered. Then at the end of the second year, the elephant delivered. You know, and the dog came and said, ah, I didn't know you were pregnant, though. And the elephant laughed. He said, once you give birth to your pe puppy, nobody knows you have delivered anything. He said, when I deliver my baby elephant, he said, the earth shakes. He said, you confuse my delay with denial. He said, my delay is extra work because what I'm carrying is not normal size. What I'm carrying is meant to better break through and shake the whole world. You know what I'm telling you this today? Some of you, you're not delayed, sir. It's just the fact that it's extra work for extra glory. Read the Bible very well. All the women that had delay in childbirth gave birth to supernatural children. Anna, Elizabeth, who again? Sarah. They all gave birth to supernatural children. So every time you are delayed, before you start jumping and open your mouth and say, hey, God, when? Hey, God, why? Hey, God, twist. Say, Lord, it seems as if I'm carrying something. And you will know that the elephant says, if I give birth to one, the whole head shakes. You have given birth to 40 puppies right now. Nobody knows. You have given birth to something. Let them keep giving birth to puppy. By the time you bet your own, the whole head will shake. Stand on your feet and let us pray. Glory to God.